three types of letters in Japanese. Yeah, Mina! It's Yena! It's me, Chan! Today's video is an introduction to the three types of letters in Japanese. You might be like, what? There's what? three types of letters in Japanese? That's how I felt when I first started to learn Japanese. <laughs> so today we're here to help you understand the differences and why we need them all. Dewa, Hajimasho! All right, so we said that there are three types of letters in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us what the three types are? Sure. So they are hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Oh, so hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Yes. What do they look like? Good question. So look at this sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these highlighted characters are hiragana. Mm, so the highlighted ones mm. are called hiragana. hiragana. And notice they are kind of curvy. Mm. Mm. And these are katakana. Mm. So this is katakana. Yes. And these are rather square shaped. Mm. And these are kanji. Mm. So we could see all three letters used in one sentence. Mm -hmm. oh, so we do need all of them. We do. But we'll get in depth right now. All right. So let's start with hiragana. Yay. What is hiragana, Micha? So hiragana is the basic Japanese alphabet. Mm. So if you don't know hiragana, you're not going to be able to read, write, or recognize Japanese words. Okay, so out of all three of them, it is the most basic and the most important actually. It is, yes. So there's no sentence that we don't use hiragana. Mm, true. In English, we have 26 alphabets right. in total. And we could make any sentence or any word within those 26 alphabets. Mm -hmm. Right. But how many are there for Japanese basic letters? Hiragana. There are 46 characters or phonetic sounds. Wow. In hiragana. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's and a lot. It is a lot. But here is the entire list of hiragana. All right. Wow. Yeah. There. Are a lot. They all look like drawings. They do. <laughs> they look I scribbles. Mean they are. <laughs> so these are actually written vertically. Mm. Yeah. And when Japanese is written vertically, you read from top to bottom, right to left. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And each column is a set. Mm. So there are five characters, right? And each column starts with the same alphabet, mm. except for the first one because these are the vowels. Oh. Next. What is katakana and why do we need to know katakana? Alright, so katakana is exactly the same as hiragana in terms of how they sound, how you pronounce it. Oh. So they are also 46 of the characters in katakana. Also. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. yes. But they look different? Mm -hmm. That's the difference. <laughs> and the functions oh. differ a lot. Really? But we'll get to that. Alright. Last but not least, what is kanji and why do we have to know kanji? Okay, so these are characters that we copied from Chinese characters. Mm. Some overlap, but they are original ones that we created okay. in Japanese. So it's quite similar with the Chinese characters. Very similar. All right. Yes. And there are said to be over 100,000 kanji that exist. <laughs> but apparently in daily life, we only use about 3,000 or something. I don't know why life. the others exist at this point. I don't know. Just to like expand our way of expression. <laughs> <laughs> maybe for those who study literature? Maybe, maybe. But yeah, so it's more efficient to just memorize and learn the, the 3,000 first, right? Right. Because, yeah. But we have a lot to memorize. We do. 3,000 is still a lot. <laughs> oh my god. So, I mean, you say that we use 3,000 of them daily. Do you know all 3,000? I hope I do. <laughs> Hopefully. I think I learned a lot of those, most of those, if not all of them. Yeah, even Japanese have to study kanji throughout their life. Wow. Mm. Okay. There's still a lot of kanji that, that I need to learn too. So that's how hard kanji is to memorize. Never ending. It's a ne yeah, it's a never ending journey. It is. So kanji are ideograms, mm -hmm. meaning each character represents a meaning or an image. Oh, really? Mm. After all, the reason that kanji exists, it's to make a meaning more easier to understand. Yes. So by combining kanji, you can create new words. Mm. Okay, so let's look at this example. Ta-da! Yena-chan, how do you read this? I'm a kanji expert, which I'm not actually, but I know how to read this one. Okay. It's called shinyu. Yes, you got it. Shinyu. 
I'm not gonna tell you what it means, you're gonna have to guess. But it's gonna be easy once we break it down. Okay, so look at the first kanji. Shin. Shin, yes. This means close or friendly. Oh, so close or friendly. Yes, it shows the closeness. Mm. Okay. And the second kanji, you. I know you know this kanji. You. And a lot of people might have seen it from tomodachi. Mm. So it means friend. Friend, yes. So combine close, friend, shin, you, which means you have best, best friend. friend. <laughs> How fun is this? I love kanji. I can't agree to her. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh. It is fun after all, mm. but it's gonna be quite difficult to memorize. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is how it works. By the way, aren't there two ways to read kanji? Mm. Yes, you're exactly right. I learned it. You did, huh? I did. Do you mind if I explain? Sure. All right. So there are two ways to read kanji. Mm -hmm. And the first way is called onyomi. Onyomi. And the second one is kunyomi. Kunyomi. Yes. So the first one, onyomi, is when you read the kanji with Chinese sounds. Mm -hmm. So it's like from China. Right. Whereas the second one, kunyomi, is the Japanese sound that we read from a kanji. We created it. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really more confusing and difficult because even if you have one same kanji, mm -hmm. there are going to be two different ways to read it. Yeah. And it depends on which um, kanji you combine it with or if you use it solely. It differs and it's really kind of random, honestly. It's very a, confusing. Right? So it's just a rule that you have to memorize after mm -hmm. all, but you're going to get used to it mm -hmm. probably. But this is the most difficult part. It is difficult. But there's so much to add on to this and expand on, so we're gonna make another video on this. Yeah, so stay tuned. Let's move on to the functions of each letter. Mm, let's so do it. Starting from hiragana. Okay. What are the functions of hiragana? How do we use it? All right, so there are four functions to hiragana. Mm. So number one, it's for okurigana. Okurigana. Mm. Okurigana is suffixes that follow kanji. Oh. Yeah, so sometimes when you have kanji, you're gonna have to put hiragana afterwards. Oh. Then without the hiragana, it's not gonna make sense. Sometimes. Oh. And for okurigana, it's usually used for verbs and adjectives. Mm. And when it's used for verbs, it helps conjugate the verbs. Okay. Mm. For example, this. Oki. Oki. It means big. Mm. It's an adjective. Right. Yeah. So here's the kanji mm -hmm. and the hiragana. Hiragana, two hiragana characters. So all together, this is one word. Yes. Okay. Number two, it's used for particles. Particles are something like no, mm. which indicates possession, mm -hmm. and to, which means and, and together with mm. all those words. So just the particles that are used within a sentence. Yes. And that's why we can't make a sentence without hiragana. Exactly. Number three is for words that we usually write in hiragana. Mm. These are the words that we usually see them written in hiragana. And it's easier to write in hiragana. Mm. There are kanji. Mm. You can also write these words in kanji, but mm. it's just more natural to write and see them in hiragana. Okay. Yeah. For example, ringo, which means apple. Yeah. Or usagi, which means rabbit. Mm. So these words are more natural to read or write in hiragana. Mm -hmm. Number four is for furigana. Furigana. Yes. Furigana is those tiny hiragana written above or right next to kanji. Mm. And they help you read kanji properly. Mm. So as we said, not all Japanese or not all people could read all 3,000 kanjis mm -hmm. that we usually use in daily life. Mm -hmm. So we have that furigana mm -hmm. that actually supports us to read the kanji. Mm -hmm. Generally, I see furigana mm. spaces written on application forms, for example, where I would have to write my name. Right. Right. True. And in Japanese textbooks a lot, so it helps the Japanese learners to read the kanji and read what's written down. Mm -hmm. Next is katakana. katakana. What are the functions of katakana? Okay, so for katakana, we have three functions. And number one is for Foreign loan words. Foreign loan words. Yeah, meaning words that we took or borrowed mm. from foreign languages. And I think this would include my name. Mm. I would rather write it in katakana since my name is a Korean name mm -hmm. and we brought it from the Korean pronunciation. Mm -hmm. So I think we use a lot of foreign names as katakana. Yes, yeah, so other examples include naiki. 
the brand names. Nike. Foreign brand names. Yes. Right. Foreign brand names. Basketball. 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 Right. Because that's not Japanese originally.、Mm. Number two is for onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia.、Mm. So, what's an onomatopoeia? Onomatopoeia is basically sound effects. Oh, and we use katakana. Yes. For example, in English, roosters、mm-hmm. cry. Kakadoodoo. Yes. But in Japanese, they cry. Koke koko. Koke koko. <laughs> yeah, that's how we Japanese hear them cry. All right.、Yeah. So, we would use katakana for the sound effects. Yes. Number three is for new words that already exist. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we always have new words that we you know, create, keep creating. Right. Yeah. Generation by generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, usually for these words, already the hiragana and kanji forms exist、mm-hmm. for these words.、Mm-hmm. And that's why we use katakana for this.、Mm. Yeah. So, for example, we have ukeru. Ukeru.、Mm. Ukeru originally, or usually, it means to receive. But lately, it's used when you find something really funny, hilarious. Oh, really? Yeah. There is no relation at all. Not at all, not at all. Maybe there is, but I just can't think of an association.、Mm, so it's just a brand new word for real? Yeah, exactly.、Okay. Yeah. So since we can express this word in hiragana and kanji already, we're just gonna have to use katakana. And this applies to other words too.、Mm. Last is kanji. Kanji. What are the functions of it? All right, so for kanji, we have two functions. One is to convey meaning through each character. So that means that each character has its own meaning.、Mm-hmm. A good example for this are names. Our names. So the reason why names are a good example is because usually, this is actually for Korea too,、mm. but in Japan generally, when a parent names a child, they have their kanji name, right? Right. And they usually set a meaning for the child's name、mm-hmm. to make it more meaningful to live their life as their name. So we would use the kanji's meaning very specifically here、mm-hmm. when we make a name for a child. Yeah. I love the culture. Me too. And the second function is to make it easier to read a sentence.、Oh. Mm. So in Japanese, we don't use spaces in between words like <gasps> English. So hard. Yeah, so if you write everything in hiragana, the basic alphabet, the basic Japanese alphabet, it's gonna be hard to distinguish you know, words,、mm-hmm. the verbs, the nouns,、um, the subject, the particles, just all, the whole grammar structure. It's gonna be chaotic. Yeah, yeah, hondoni. So, I don't like kanji, but thanks to kanji, reading a sentence becomes easier. Much easier. And this is exactly why you should learn and know all three forms of Japanese letters. Yeah. Okay, so here are some tips for the Japanese learners out there, since I am a Japanese learner myself too. So, first, I would recommend you guys to start with hiragana. We have some hiragana videos coming up. In our hiragana series videos, we teach hiragana in an entertaining and exciting way.、Mm-hmm. So please stay tuned for those. After you're done memorizing hiragana, since katakana has the same pronunciation、mm-hmm. as hiragana, all you have to do is memorize the different shapes these two have、right. and have the pronunciation in there. So you have to be very careful when you differentiate it. But after all, it's good to memorize it as a set. As well. That's true. And we're gonna have some katakana videos after we're all done with the hiragana series, so wait for that! Yeah! Last but not least, again, is kanji. <laughs> so, kanji is very hard. Very hard. Yeah. And it's an endless homework, not only for the foreigners or the basic Japanese learners, but for even native Japanese, everyone out there.、Mm-hmm. So, for kanji, you just have to continuously like read and write and just. Study it, like you just have to continuously do that constantly,、mm-hmm. and that's why it's the most difficult one. But after all, if we would have to have orders to memorize these three letters, it would be first hiragana, second katakana, third kanji, which is gonna take a pretty long time. So, good luck! We're in this together, guys. We got this. Thank you so much for watching our video today about the three types of letters in Japanese. And for all the beginners and anybody who watched this video, we hope that this video helped you and gave you a more clear understanding of why there are three letters in Japanese. Alright, if you liked our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And leave a comment if you have any question or request. Yeah! Down below! Ciao, またね!
and we could make twing. Okay. Twing. <laughs> so using using <laughs> using. So using candy. Oh my god. Wait, <laughs> 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 <laughs>